It's 11 a.m. A team of police, trading standards officers, and sniffer dogs enter a nondescript corner shop on the outskirts of Darby City Center. Today's raids are the result of weeks of meticulous planning, test purchases, and tip-offs. Okay. Got positive indication here. So what you're doing now is just, he's just like staring at me and looking at where he's found it. And he's as if it's there. It's in the counter here somewhere. It's behind here. So they have an idea of what they'll find, but no idea where it's hidden or how much. Ah, oh, I got it. it there, but I couldn't find the switch, so I just had to, I used those and pulled it. Sniffer dogs lead the way on what looks like a hunt for Class A drugs. And how long have you lived in Derby? Paul, this dog's confirmed it in here. You are? This dog has confirmed it. Yeah, right. Slide, slide. You just, yeah. There we go. Well done, well done dog. Looking. I don't know how deep it goes, you see, but. Good boy, Sam. Hidden behind a fake wall in the bathroom, the team finds thousands of pounds worth of illegal tobacco products. This is just the start of their day. They still have six more shops to go. According to HMRC, since 2010, 2,350,968,609 illegal cigarettes have been seized at the UK border. What makes this tobacco illegal is that it hasn't paid taxes in the UK. In George Osborne's recent budget plan, the tax on tobacco rose by 2% on cigarettes and 3% on hand-rolling tobacco. This saw the cost of a pack of cigarettes rise by 21 pence. Illegal tobacco products enter the country by being smuggled across the border by criminal networks through notoriously creative means. These goods are sold for a fraction of the price on an unregulated black market. Criminals profit from this illicit trade because they offer competitive prices in an increasingly expensive market. Perpetrators can face up to 10 years in prison, unlimited fines, and the loss of their retail license. Tax evasion on tobacco products costs the taxpayer billions of pounds a year. We requested an FOI from HMRC, which revealed that since 2010, taxes lost through the illegal market have steadily increased from 1.7 to 2.1 billion pounds. NHS figures show that 2.1 billion pounds would cover the health costs for all smokers in the United Kingdom. It's nearly impossible for an untrained eye to tell the difference between legal and illegal tobacco. We met with Doug Love, who has been working for Islington Trading Standards dealing with illegal consumer goods for over 20 years. He showed us the difference between the two types of illegal tobacco, genuine non-duty paid and counterfeit. These two uh, packs of Golden Virginia, one is genuine and one is counterfeit but made to look non-duty paid and therefore genuine. Um, one way to tell is using a UV light. If you focus on the genuine one, you'll see a code come up on the tax stamp under UV light. Whereas on the counterfeit ones, you have no such code and they're just blank. So where do these smuggled cigarettes come from? In the last few years we've seen some changes um, on the global footprint of where illegal tobacco is smuggled from um, and we've seen criminals take advantage of uh, emerging international political factors. So um, going back to the late 90s and early 2000s we saw a, a lot of oversupply. So the tobacco manufacturers oversupplying their genuine product to countries that had unstable governments or uh, had histories of corruption. So countries such as uh, of Moldova or Afghanistan and, and other countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, and, that, and that still continues, but we've also seen um, in the last, last few years uh, an, a, a large increase uh, in um, uh, cheap cigarettes that are, are manufactured in factories that have been available for uh, um, high levels of smuggling into the UK. It's no secret that cigarettes are dangerous. 
According to statistics published by Action on Smoking and Health, about half of all regular smokers will eventually be killed by their addiction. But illegal cigarettes pose a unique set of safety risks. In 2012, um, April of 2012, my mum died in a house fire. Um, and the cause of that house fire was the fact that my mum had dropped a cigarette into her chair, which had, the flames had engulfed her in her chair. When it went to the coroner's court, um, the coroner advised us that the cigarettes that mum had been smoking at the time, which were a brand called Jin Ling, were an illicit brand. And basically, they, it, when they're not being smoked, actively smoked, um, they don't extinguish like normal cigarettes do. Mum had been a smoker all her life, um, but no, we didn't know what brand of cigarettes she was smoking. Um, she used to have her cigarettes in slightly old-fashioned, I suppose, but one of these little ladies' cigarette cases, um, and it had no packaging on. And quite honestly, I think even if we'd knew, um, if we'd seen the packaging on the cigarettes, I'm not so sure that we would have um, known what they were, especially as the Jin Ling brand um, looks very similar to the, the well-known brand of Camel cigarettes. He did. He knew um, the guy in the club very well. Um, the guy's married with two children. He has a Polish wife. Um, our understanding is that um, th th through contacts um, in the Polish community, um, the cigarettes had been acquired. And then the husband was selling them on to just boost his holiday fund, I think. I think the police are doing as much work as they're able to. Um, I think they'd like to do more, but the government seems to be more interested in loss of revenue than actual um, the health implications and the loss of life. While any cigarette could cause a house fire, genuine cigarettes are designed to go out if not actively smoked. All regulated cigarettes have a design feature called reduced ignition propensity, which acts as a speed bump to reduce burning time. The cigarette on the left is an illegal Jin Ling cigarette, the same kind Julie's mother smoked. As you can see, the illegal cigarette burns at a much faster rate than the legal cigarette. Not only is the design of counterfeit cigarettes unregulated, but also its contents. Here are some of the things that have been found. Human excrement, asbestos, flies, arsenic, and formaldehyde. Unsurprisingly, people have experienced strange side effects while smoking them. I was 16, 17, and I was on a school trip and snuck out for a cigarette. Not that you're supposed to do that, but everyone does. And I had bought a packet of cigarettes. I think it was from one of the other girls at school who lived abroad, and they would come and sell them to us for cheaper. So they'd be cheaper than the ones from the airport, duty-free cigarettes. I think they were from Gibraltar, because that's why I used to always buy them off. Uh, and they were camel blues, I remember. Anyway, so me and my friend decided to sneak around the back of the theatre, have a cigarette, and then we were just talking and sort of didn't really say anything. And then after about three or four drags, we sort of thought, and I kind of thought, oh, it's just me, I'm not gonna say anything. And then I kind of looked at the cigarette and I was, and I thought to myself, this does not feel right. And then at the same time, we both just looked at each other and were like, is your face going numb? Yes, mine too. And it kind of started at your mouth and then suddenly it was like your cheek and everything just felt kind of numb. And it lasted for like 10 minutes, which was quite weird. It felt very long time. London has one of the lowest seizure rates of illegal tobacco products in the country. Only 28% of raids resulted in finding illicit material. One of the things that makes illegal tobacco so dangerous is how readily available it is to consumers. We're here in London on Brick Lane to see how easy it is for us to buy it. Five pounds per more Can I get a packet, please? I'm so hot. Um, thanks so much. Thanks. Right, let's go. So the first corner shop we walked into, my producer was offered these Marlboros for five pounds. A regular pack of Marlboros usually costs around ten pounds, so these obviously aren't being sold on the legitimate market. We went back to Doug Love to get his opinion. So these are the cigarettes we were sold on Brick Lane. Okay. Um, well, immediately I can tell they're illegal to sell in the UK because they're um, a Ukraine pack, I think, and they've got. An Ukrainian tax stamp there. Uh, UK packs should have English language warnings. 
Campaigns across the country are raising public awareness with the hope that more people will come forward to report illegal sales and dealers. We went along on what's called an illegal tobacco roadshow, where members of Hounslow Trading Standards spent the day educating and encouraging the public to come forward with tip-offs. How important is the public in finding illicit tobacco? Oh, very important. If it wasn't for the public, we wouldn't have found half the stuff that we found previously. Um, this week alone, based on two locations that we have had the unit with, um, we carried out an enforcement day and of the eight premises we visited, three of them came up positive and we found a stash then of illegal tobacco. Illegal tobacco being um, whether it's foreign or possibly counterfeit, but we won't know it's counterfeit until we have it checked, but it's mostly foreign or tax evaded. Research carried out by Smoke Free Southwest, a charity that targets illegal tobacco in southwest England, has reported an increase in public awareness of illegal tobacco. It's risen from 61 to 70 percent over the past three years. However, recent funding cuts threaten to put campaigning at a standstill. Uh, if we had more funding, then we could take it up to another level. We've never used television uh, because it is so expensive. Um, so with the illegal tobacco campaigns, we've only ever done it on billboards and with um, radio adverts. We back it up with local road shows where we have gone out into shopping precincts um, and uh, integra interacted with the public um, to make positive contact uh, and actually picking up intel that trading standards colleagues who have been um, working on the stands with us have then gone and taken enforcement action against. So when we go out and talk to the public it's really effective but it all costs money uh, and unfortunately where the 11 councils in the South West were collaboratively funding uh, a programme through Public Health Action to deliver this work. Because of government cuts to local authorities that programme uh, is being terminated early. So there won't be uh, any campaign activity this year or for the foreseeable future to keep the awareness um, raised and to keep the intel flowing in the same way across the southwest. The plot is thickening in the fight against illegal tobacco. By the end of May, the packaging of all tobacco goods manufactured in the UK will be standardized. This is the latest in the government's ongoing drive to reduce smoking rates. All packaging will look like this, marking the end of branding as we know it. Back in March of 2015, MPs voted here to standardize tobacco packaging with a vote of 367 to 113. From May 20th of this year, all tobacco manufactured in the United Kingdom will have to be packaged in the same greenish brown packaging with its brand in standard font on the back. Tobacco giants such as Philip Morris International and British American Tobacco have claimed that this ruling will make it easier for criminals to copy their designs, therefore increasing the scale of the illegal market. But how will this really affect the illegal market? Tobacco companies have spent the past year fighting the ruling, taking the case all the way up to the European Court of Justice. A report from HMRC has revealed that no evidence has been found to suggest the introduction of standardized packaging will have a significant impact on the overall size of the illicit market. Australia has already introduced this legislation and has seen a 12 percent drop in tobacco sales. A leading expert on illegal tobacco at Bath University suggests that a possible loss in profits is behind the backlash. So is their concern really about counterfeit cigarettes or losing money? They are commissioning reports, you know, showing that various policies will increase the illicit tobacco trade. In fact, in a recent study when we looked at the evidence they were using to um, on cigarette smuggling to oppose plain packaging here, what we found is there was no independent evidence that they were able to cite to support their argument that plain packaging would increase cigarette smuggling. Instead, they were only able to depend on evidence they'd effectively manu manufactured, so evidence they'd paid for, or the opinions of those that they'd pay for. We reached out to tobacco companies but received no comment. The tobacco market is undergoing a transformation. Cigarette prices are continually rising, cuts are being made to campaign budgets, and standardized packaging is about to be introduced. Evidence suggests that we can expect to see the number of legal smokers fall, but will the illegal market follow suit, or will this changing landscape attract more smokers to a cheaper product?